for an exclusive clip of Matt and Glenn discussing the trans controversy that divided the atheist experience, plus more bonus content, sign up at thebigconversation.show. The, the beautiful story that you're talking about where, you know, the most powerful being comes down and becomes a cell, becomes one of the, you know, one of the weak, one of the fallen in order to save them. That's an incredibly nice way to package it, but that's, I have, I guess, a completely different take on it uh, because the story is a little different. The story starts in Genesis where God creates everybody and then it all screws up and then he tries to fix it and it screws up and he tries to fix it and it screws up. It's this parade, it's this comedy of errors. And then you get to a spot where God, who's been demanding that we slaughter animals and burn them because he likes barbecue, is now decided that he's going to come down and take human form and sacrifice himself to himself for a weekend to fix everything for everybody. That's not, that's blood magic. That is sacrificial okay. blood magic thinking and nothing to do about human value. Who actually believes that? What you, what, what you just described as a summary of Christianity. How, I mean, who actually believes that? How could you, you not? Said? Wait, did, mean, did God come down and become human, God sacrifice the son, himself? Said, God the Son became God our brother. He's still God. God the Son okay. became God our brother. Right? But the son, the son of are the you father. a non-Trinitarian? Sorry. That, that's, no, precisely because I'm Trinitarian. God the Son right. became God our brother, full of the Holy Spirit, okay. in order to unite us as family back to the same source, back to the Father. That's, okay. This is basic Trinitarian theology. Did God not sacrifice himself? The Father sent the Son. But they're the same. They're not the same. They're, they're, they're part of the Trinity. Yeah, they are definitely. They are of, one, right? They are definitely part of the Trinity. Are they one, though? They're, they're, they're united, absolutely. The Father, well, Son, and Spirit. United. I mean, we're united at a table, but we're not mm -hmm. one. Mm -hmm. um, the Father is in the Son, and the Son is in the Father. So that they are united on, on, on a level that is far superior to ours. But they Why are does the there need to be person. a blood sacrifice? Well, because to, to walk away from God, to be disconnected from life, means death. Right, and in the Bible, the the life is in the blood. Well, the, who made that rule? It's it's the nature of the case, don't you think? If God is life, God is a source God of life. Couldn't God have done it differently? Well, he, if God is the source of life, and we reject life, what does that leave us with? Death. If God wants to unite with us in our death, what will He have to take on? Our death. So you're talking. First of all, you're speaking kind of metaphorically here, because I'm not rejecting life. I'm rejecting a proposition that there's some eternal life mm -hmm. uh, mm. because I don't see sufficient evidence for it. If there is, cool. Mm -hmm. But God, th this notion, why does there need to be a blood sacrifice at all? Uh -huh. I, at some point we were running around killing animals and doing it because God loved the smell of burning flesh. Uh, literally, it says that. Mm -hmm. Now, while it's... I know, I know what, what, I think I know what part of the objection is. It's like the Easter story when they, when, when atheists will say, and then the zombies rose up and marched on Jerusalem and people be like, there's nothing in the Bible about zombies, but it does talk about the dead getting up out of the graves and going in there. And so it's a colloquialism to refer to it as zombies. I don't think even mm -hmm. the atheists mm -hmm. by and large are thinking that we're talking walking okay. dead here, but it, it's a shorthand sure. to show that there's something that's potentially absurd here, an extraordinary claim that doesn't have evidence for it. This isn't even that. This isn't even an extraordinary claim that doesn't have evidence for it. This is, to me, bizarre. What is it about killing something that God needs you to do in order for God to forgive you? Because if God is the creator of everything, including the rules of how all this works, couldn't he have come up with rules that don't involve killing things? Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, first of all, the priest was many other things, but he was also your butcher, right? Um, you, you would eat the lamb after you sacrificed it. You would eat the, the bull. You know, we, we, we still go to the butcher. We still sacrifice our animals. And in that sacrifice, even today, in a very secular sense, the death of that animal means our life in, 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 that, in that very literal sense, okay? That animal dies so that we might live. And it's just that in the Old Testament, it was also teaching a spiritual dimension on top of the barbecues that we all love. You're from Texas, I'm from Australia, we love barbecues, okay. The vegans are gonna hate us. <laughs> <laughs> it was a great conversation with Cosmic Skeptic, by the way. Um, on top of that 
butchery, there was also a spiritual lesson being taught. And the, and the spiritual lesson being taught was not that the blood of this bull is paying for your sin, but, the, but that there is a Messiah who is coming who will pay for your sins. Because, no, the blood of goats and bulls cannot pay for sin, but God can take responsibility for his handiwork. And God did take responsibility for his handiwork. And it, and it was his death that actually paid for sin. That's the, that's the story.